you want to talk to us this morning for a few minutes from the subject on life's journey to glory. Take heed to the road sign. On life's journey to glory. Take heed to the road sign. Matthew 7, 13 says, Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in thereat, because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life. And few there be that find it. The Living Bible says, Heaven can be entered only through a narrow gate. Right. Somebody ought to help me here this morning. Yeah. <clears throat> the way to hell is broad. Yeah. And the gate is wide. Right. It's wide enough for all the multitudes who choose the easy way. But the gateway to life is small, uh -huh. and the road is narrow, and only a few ever find it. I want somebody to turn to your neighbor and tell them, on my life's journey, I am determined to obey the road sign. Amen. My brothers and my sisters, almost 2,000 years ago, Jesus stood on the mountainside and told his hearers that life can be compared to a highway and that we have a choice as to whether we will travel the broad way which leads to destruction or whether we will travel the straight and narrow way which leads to eternal life. The bad truth is that everybody talking about heaven ain't going there. A whole lot of folk you expect to find in heaven won't be there. Everyone is on a spiritual journey as they travel through life. Jesus is saying to us today, freedom of choice is yours. As it relates to the highway you travel, as well as your final destination. We can enter in at the wide gate. We can carry all of our sinful baggage with us. And we can travel, or we can travel on the broad way. And it has these restrictions where there's always a fun, loving crowd. However, if we choose the other highway, somebody help me today. I mean the King's Highway. We have to make some major adjustments from the very beginning. Hello, somebody. There's a garbage can at the entrance. And there's a list of items and attitudes which we are required to share before we can get on the highway. The entrance gate is small, and a potential traveler must be willing to shed such items as lust, help me, Holy Ghost, greed, pride, jealousy, envy, malice, and hatred. Not only are we required to take these items off upon entering the highway, we are required to keep them off during the whole life journey. Yeah. You see, not only is the entrance gate narrow, but also narrow. On the other hand, those who travel the broad way don't have to worry about taking off anything. There are no restrictions, no warning signs, no caution signs, no slow zone, and no stop signs full speed ahead. Uh -huh. Once you get on the Broadway, yeah. you're free to travel yeah. at your own rate. Uh -huh. You don't have to buckle up, nor do you have to observe any speed limit. Uh -huh. The 
chances are that while you're on your way to your final destination, you'll be having such a good time that you'll forget where you're going and how you're going to get there. Just as there are road signs which assist us as we travel along our local, state, and national highways, there are some similar road signs which help us as we travel upon life's highway. Amen. Now help me, uh, help me today. Let, let's look at some of these familiar signs. Okay. One of the most frequent signs on the highway is one which says caution. Road narrows ahead. Uh -huh. This means that a little further up the road, some repair work is going on Amen. in one of those lanes, and, and that all the traffic is restricted to one lane. Yes. Anybody listening to me this morning? Yes. And you know it well as I know, uh -huh. that when you only have one lane in which to travel, you can't do much swaying from side to side. Yes. If you do, you'll find yourself either running into the markers or running into the orange cones or running somewhere in a ditch. Well, very often on this Christian journey, the highway gets narrow, and we have to restrict ourselves that relates to our lifestyle and our daily activities. You see, other travelers are watching us, and if we become wishy-washy along the way, Moving from side to side will set a bad example for those who are coming after us. The Christian highway is a narrow highway. Can I get a witness here? You don't say anything you want to say on this highway. You watch your mouth and guard your speech. You can't go everywhere you want to go. And you have to be very careful who you run with. Can I get a witness here? You can't do everything you want to do when you want to do it, and how you want to do it. You can't participate in everything which looks good to you on the outside. It might look good, but everything that glitters is not gold. This is a narrow way. There's no room for a whole lot of excessive baggage. Hating on folk, come on, help me, Holy Ghost. Hating on folk, ain't no option. Running folk down, ain't cool. Gossiping and backstabbing. Can I get a witness? All unacceptable. So when you see the road sign which says caution, road narrow, you better slow down and take it easy. Or you might be in for a terrible spiritual accident. Then another frequent road sign which you see on the highway is this, caution men working. Nowadays, it's men and women working. That's a delightful sign. It says that the road is going to be a little better after a while. It says that my tax dollars are being put to good use. It says that the highway commissioners are interested in my safety. And I'll tell you something else. And I think about it when I see the road sign which says men are working. It suggests that some men are not shirking their responsibility. And if men are not shirking their responsibility, it means that wives and children are living in comfortable homes, eating wholesome food, and wearing pretty clothes. A man, somebody, help me, Lord. a real man is more than just britches, belts, and suspenders. A real man is more than just a deep voice. It's getting a job and keeping a job. Help me, Holy Ghost. Can I say that again? I said a real man is getting a job and keeping a job. It's accountability and responsibility. And you don't, you don't, and you, you don't know. It's a shame when working men are run down and put out of work. Can I get a witness? Reckless drivers. Let me tell you something. When you see a sign in the church which says men working, you ought to be very cautious. It's a shame when men who work diligent in the church are sometimes run down by reckless talkers. It's a shame when men and women who take the church work seriously have to cut back on their Christian duty because of reckless critics, reckless instigators, and reckless agitators. Can I get a witness here? 
it's such a blessing to see men and women working that every effort should be made to encourage them and keep them working. The renovation committee of our church had revealed some real men and real women working. The next time somebody called you and said, those deacon and deaconess or those up there at the church think they are so much, you say to them, say to that call a caution, those men and women are working for the Lord. And since they are willing to work, the least you can do is to let them work without your problem. Can I get a witness? Another sign which is seen on the highway is do not pass. A no passing zone uh, reminds us that we can't always be in the front. If I ain't in the front, I ain't gonna participate in the process. On a narrow way, it's safer to be behind than it is to take a chance on getting in front. One man said that one day he was traveling behind an 18-wheeler on a narrow highway. I was going, he said, up a steep hill. And when I got real close, I noticed a sign on the rear of a truck which read, I may be slow, but I'm still in front. My brothers and my sisters, many head-on collisions occur when impatient drivers try to pass in a no-passing zone. Can I get a witness here? Well, what does it mean? What does it mean as it relates to the church? It means that we need to learn how to follow the one who is leading. Every organization in the church has a leader, and as a member of your respective organization, you have an obligation to follow the leader. Everybody can't lead. Some folk are of the mind that if I can't run it, I'll ruin it. Can I get a witness? Of course, we're just assuming that your leader is a dedicated Christian who has a sense of direction. Don't try to take your leader's authority. When you do that, you're traveling, help me somebody, in a no-passing zone. Don't be in such a hurry to show your skills and put your knowledge on display that you pass by your leader. When you do that, you're driving in a no-passing zone, and you're subject to have a head-on collision. Let, let me tell you something else. Leadership ain't no picnic. Can I get a witness here? Yeah? Being up front ain't no picnic. Sometimes it's sleepless nights and major headaches and heartaches. It's 24-7 in sleepless nights and worrisome days. And then, of much more important than anything I've said about a no passing zone, is don't try to get ahead of God. Amen. Let me say that again. I said don't try to get ahead of God. Don't be in such a big hurry to do your thing, to accomplish your goal, that you try to forget about God and get in front of God. Uh, Matthew 6.33 said, Well, seek ye first. Yeah. I wish y'all would help me this morning the kingdom of heaven, and all these other things, somebody know what I'm talking about, shall be added unto you. Oh, God's way of getting things done may be slow, but don't ever try to bypass him. When you get in front of God, you're sure enough headed for a head-on collision. The prophet Isaiah was right on target when he said, they that wait, somebody help me here, they that wait shall, help me Holy Ghost, Renew their strength. Yeah. Mount up with wings as eagles. Run and not be weary. Walk and not faint. Yeah. Somebody said to talk with God, no speech is lost. Uh, talk uh, on. To walk with God, no strength is lost. Walk on. Yeah. To wait on God, no time is lost. Wait on. Yeah. No one has ever lost any time waiting on God. Yeah. You gain strength and you make up time when you wait on God. Uh, then there's another road sign which says that, that you should detour. The word detour means turn off the road which you are traveling and take another road. The word detour means that you, there's danger up ahead on the road that you're traveling. Right. The word detour means that it's not safe to continue on the road which you're traveling. Uh -huh. Or oh, let me make it plain. On this straight and narrow highway, on the Christian journey, very often we see detour signs warning us that we need to turn from our wicked ways. 
If you're involved in an immoral affair with somebody else's husband or wife, detour. Help me, Holy Ghost. I ain't meddling. I ain't meddling. I'm just telling God's truth. Don't get mad at me. I'm just telling the truth. If you're involved in some illegal underhand racket, detour. If you are smoking pot, using crack, or snorting cocaine, you need to detour. Come on, help me, Holy Ghost. Somebody ought to help me here this morning. The road you travel is a dangerous road. It's a dead-end street upon which you can lose your life. And whether you're so young people, observe life road sign. Whenever you see that detour sign, don't go any further on that road. You're traveling at your own risk. Your road dog might take, will take you down to the pits of hell. When you see a detour sign, you need to turn from your wicked way and travel on another road. Then there's another road sign which says soft shoulder. Uh, this means that you need to stay on the pavement. It means that the area on the other side is not dry. It's not sturdy. It's not steadfast. It won't support the weight of your automobile. And if you insist on driving on the shoulder, you're subject to get stuck in the mud. I don't want to keep you here too long this morning. On this Christian journey, we need to stay on the pavement. We need to stay in the straight and narrow way. The hymn knowledge is headed right when he said, On Christ, the solid rock, I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. We need to stand and travel on that solid rock, which is Christ Jesus. When we wander, wander from that pavement, when we begin walking in the counsel of ungodly people, when we step off the pavement, begin standing in the way of sinners, when we stray away from the pavement and begin sitting on the shoulder with the scornful, we are subject to get stuck in the mud of doubt and dubiosity and uncertainty. Don't run the risk of losing your faith and getting stuck in the mud by driving on soft shoulder. Now, now let me tell you about a road sign which must absolutely be obeyed if you don't want to have an accident. The sign says, caution, dangerous curve. Can I get a witness? Caution, dangerous curve. Oh, how many people have lost their way by not heeding to dangerous curve? When you approach a curve, you need to slow down. I ain't talking about myself, I'm talking about all y'all. When, when you reach a curve, you need to slow down. You need to take your foot off the accelerator and put your foot on the brakes. Stop it, put on the brakes. Curves are dangerous. Help me, Holy Ghost. Both in the physical as well as the spirit. Let me do some man talk here. Let me do some man-to-man -man talk. Many men have lost their physical as well as their spiritual life because they didn't watch out for dangerous curves. You see, soft shoulders are bad enough. You can get stuck on soft shoulders. But dangerous curve. Watch me now, I'm going somewhere. Man to man talk. When you get your eyes fixed on a dangerous curve, instead of watching where you're going, you're shown sure up in trouble. Help me, Holy Ghost. Dangerous curve severely damaged a whole lot of character. It destroyed some of God's best soldiers. Anybody here listen to me this morning? Look at Samson, one of God's hand-picked judges of Israel. He became a weakling when he started looking at Delilah's curve. Help me, Holy Ghost. We may be safe in saying that Samson was a physical giant, but he was reduced to a moral midget, all because of Delilah's dangerous curve. That was David. Y'all know what I'm talking about. You do know David, don't you? Israel's sweet psalmist, most prominent king. 
He was getting along just fine until one day he walked up on the roof of his palace and started looking at some dangerous curves. And I don't have to tell you about Solomon. Solomon was addicted to curves. He was a curve collector. He had a thousand curves all under one roof. Can't handle one, let alone a thousand. He was reported to be the wisest man who ever lived. But when you get hung up on dangerous curves, wisdom becomes a thing of the past. Beware, men, of dangerous curves. Now, as we get toward the end of the journey on life's highway, we see a very important road sign which says, be prepared to stop. Somebody said, be prepared to stop. You see, when you're driving along a highway which is being repaired, you have to be prepared for all sorts of emergency. There might be a landslide, there might be a pothole or a crack in the pavement of a dump truck might have pulled out in front of you. Well, since we don't know what may happen, we just have to be prepared for sudden stops. Let me make it plain. Somebody said that life is uncertain, but death is sure. We don't know when, we don't know how, we don't know where. The only thing we know is that we drive along life's highway, be prepared for a sudden stop. Jesus said, watch ye therefore, for you know not the hour the Lord will come. He said, be ye also ready. I'm almost ready to sit down now. Be ye also ready, for in such an hour as you think not the Son of Man will come. Nobody can under, understand, misunderstand that warning. We just have to be prepared for sudden stop. The final road sign is one which says rest area. If you've been traveling, you get tired. Anybody who travels on the highway is always glad to see that sign which says rest area. Sometimes when I pull off in a rest area, get out of my automobile, and walk around, I strike up a conversation with some other travelers who have been driving and who have been become weary of their journey. Uh -huh, uh -huh. You see, driving on the highway can cause you to get weary. Uh -huh. It can make you look forward to pulling in at a rest stop. Uh -huh. When you've been driving on a narrow road, uh -huh. when you've had to watch out for men working, uh -huh. when you've been driving in a no passing zone, yeah. when you've been had to avoid soft shoulder, when you've yeah. had to go around dangerous curves, yeah. when you have constantly been prepared to make a sudden stop. Uh -huh. You look forward to coming to a rest area. Can I get a witness here this morning? Well, let me tell you something. One of these old days, can I get a witness? One of these old days, those of us who've been traveling on life's highway, one of these old days, all of us who've been traveling on the Christian journey, one of these old days, we're going to see a stop sign which says, which reads, come unto me, all ye that labor and a heavy lady, and I will give you rest. I don't know when, and I don't know where, and I don't know what the circumstance will be. All I know that one of these old days, I'm going to pull in to a rest area. I wish I had somebody to help me here. When I pull in, I'm going to strike up a conversation with some of those travelers who've arrived already. I'm going to find my daddy and tell him just how I got over. I want to thank him for helping me throughout my life. I'm going to walk some more until I find my mama. And I'm going to tell her, thank God for praying for me. And I want to tell her how I made it over. Hallelujah. Praise God. I, I, I want to see another person there. I want to see a man who made it possible for me to get into the rest area. I want to see Jesus. Somebody here know what I'm talking about. Yeah. I want to see the man who died for me. Yeah. I want to make it to that rest area. Hey. I want to see Jesus hey. who died one Friday evening. Yeah. Can I get a witness here? Yeah? Yeah. I said died one Friday evening. Yeah. You do know that he died. Yeah. He died one Friday evening. Yeah. They buried him in a borrowed tomb. Yeah. Can I get a witness here? Yeah? Hey. But he didn't stay in that tomb. Yeah. Somebody said early. Hey. Sunday morning. He got up and declared all power in heaven and earth is in my hand. Every now and then, you see, I want to see Jesus. When I stop thinking about eternal life, when I start thinking about what God has done for me, every now and then, I want to sing that old gospel song that says, Oh, 
I want to see him. Look upon his face. There to sing forever of his saving grace. On the streets of glory, let me lift my voice. Cares all past, home at last, ever to rejoice. Can I get a witness here this morning? David sure enough had it right. When he said, when God's folk, if you know God for yourself, when you are God's people, when you've been traveling along the highway of life, when you've been down that wrong road, when God has picked you up and turned you around, David said everything is going to be all right. When you get to the rest area, you'll know that weeping only endures for a night. Somebody here know what I'm talking about. I said weeping endures only for a night. Did you hear early, early, early. Weeping endures for a night. But in the morning, in the morning, you got some joy. I say you got some joy. And joy that the world doesn't understand. Somebody said this joy. 